Okay, before we throw hybridization completely under the bus, let's look at what some of the evidence is that shows us that hybridiz the hybridization model is not an accurate way to portray bonding in, in our molecules. So here's our molecule, it's methane keeping it very simple. Again, this bond angle, we would expect to be sp3 hybridization. We would predict one or nine and a half. Bingo, that's exactly what we see experimentally. So this looks good, but there's a problem. And what specifically is this problem? Well, if you take methane and put it in the path of really strong ultraviolet radiation or x-ray uh, radiation, you find out that things don't work as we would predict with hybridization. So how do we predict it? Energy. Okay, so uh, this molecule contains four molecular orbitals, which are our sigma bonds, and it also contains four molecular orbitals, which are our sigma stars. And based on symmetry, we'd expect all these to have the same energy. So at one energy level, we have all four sigma bonds, and another energy level, we have all four Sigma stars are antibonding orbitals. How many electrons do we have in all these orbitals? Are eight molecular orbitals? Well, we have eight electrons. If you look at our molecule, we have two in that CH, two in that CH, two in that CH, two in that CH. That's eight electrons total. And where do we put our electrons in the lowest orbitals possible? So this is kind of our bonding picture. So if you can imagine bombarding our molecule with high energy, there's a potential that we could rip out one of these electrons, and I'm circling one electrons, and just blast it right out of the molecule. And if we did that, we should see that when we blast this, this molecule, there should only be one energy required to pull an electron out, because all of our electrons have the same energy. Therefore, we should only see an interaction with one particular energy level of, uh, of a high energy um, UV or low energy X-ray. This is where the experimental energy points a, a finger at hybridization. Because the fact is, we see uh, we'd expect just one energy to interact with a molecule, but we observe two energies. That is a problem because based on our picture, we don't only expect to see one. So now some experimental data is consistent with the hybridization model, namely the, the bond angle data. But this electronic excitation um, model, at, or our model doesn't fit with the, uh, the ionization energies that we see. So there's, there's kind of a question. What should we do? How do we fix this problem? Do we refine our model? Do, you know, do we... Do we need kind of hybridization 2.0? You know, maybe we can fix hybridization so it accommodates a model. And the answer is actually, we need to go back and not do hybridization. So we need to use the original atomic orbitals. We need to abandon hybridization. So to talk about this, first we're going to need to introduce another topic. We're going to need to look critically at what is hybridization doing, and then how, how do the problems that hybridization is introducing, how do we fix it by just using the original atomic orbitals?